Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Sunday, April 17th, 2022. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Yesterday, when we read the long list of the clans of the tribes of Israel, you may have noticed that under Manasseh's clan, a man named Zelophehad was singled out. He had only daughters, no sons. So why was Zelophehad singled out in, these, in this listing of the clans of the tribes of Israel? Well, today we're going to see uh, the significance of Zelophehad and his daughters. In the culture of, uh, in the Jewish culture at that time, the inheritance of property went from father to son. It didn't really go from father to daughter because the daughter would usually go and marry outside of her family and become a part of that new family. But what happens if a man such as Zelophehad dies with no sons, only daughters? Does that mean that his family is going to lose its inheritance, that's going to lose its ancestral land? The daughters of Zelophehad went to Moses and Eleazar the priest and asked, the, asked them to you know, find out from the Lord what the um, inheritance law should be in their case. And the Lord agrees with Zelophehad's daughters and says that indeed, if a man dies without any sons, only daughters, then that man's inheritance should belong to his daughters. Earlier, we saw how the Lord told Moses to uh, speak to a rock so that water would come out of it. Instead, Moses struck the rock. And as a result of that, the Lord informed Moses that he was not going to lead the people of Israel into Egypt, or into the land of Canaan, excuse me. But who is? Someone needs to lead them. Someone needs to lead them in their conquest of the land of Canaan. Well, in the second half of our reading for today, we're going to see that the Lord designated Joshua as Moses' successor. Joshua already was serving as Moses' assistant. And so today we read from Numbers chapter 27. The daughters of Zelophehad approached. Zelophehad was the son of Hefer, son of Gilead, son of Machir, son of Manasseh from the clans of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. These were the names of his daughters, Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milcah, and Tirzah. They stood before Moses, the priest Eliezer, the leaders, and the entire community at the entrance to the tent of meeting and said, our father died in the wilderness but he was not among Korah's followers who gathered together against the Lord. Instead, he died because of his own sin and he had no sons. Why should the name of our father be taken away from his clan? Since he had no son, give us property among our father's brothers. Moses brought their case before the Lord and the Lord answered him, what Zelophehad's daughters say is correct. You are to give them hereditary property among their father's brothers and transfer their father's inheritance to them. Tell the Israelites, when a man dies without a son, transfer his inheritance to his daughter. If he has no daughter, give his inheritance to his brothers. If he has no brothers, give his inheritance to his father's brothers. If his father has no brothers, give his inheritance to the nearest relative of his clan, and he will take possession of it. This is to be a statutory ordinance for the Israelites as the Lord commanded Moses. Then the Lord said to Moses, go up this mountain of the Abarim range and see the land that I have given the Israelites. After you have seen it, you will also be gathered to your people as Aaron, your brother was. When the community quarreled in the wilderness of Zin, both of you rebelled against my command to demonstrate my holiness in their sight at the waters. Those were the waters of Meribah Kadesh, in the wilderness of Zin. So Moses appealed to the Lord, may the Lord, the God who gives breath to all, appoint a man over the community who will go out before them and come back in before them, and who will bring them out and bring them in, so that the Lord's community won't be like sheep without a shepherd. The Lord replied to Moses, take Joshua, son of Nun, a man who has the spirit in him, and lay your hands on him. Have him stand before the priest Eliezer and the whole community and commission him in their sight. 
confer some of your authority on him so that the entire Israelite community will obey him. He will stand before the priest Eliezer, who will consult the Lord for him with the decision of the Urim. He and all the Israelites with him, even the entire community, will go out and come back in, come back in at his command. Moses did as the Lord commanded him. He took Joshua, had him stand before the priest Eliezer and the entire community, laid his hands on him, and commissioned him, as the Lord had spoken through Moses. Today we again read two psalms. The first psalm was written by David, and it is a call by David for the Lord's deliverance. The second psalm we'll read, Psalm 71, we don't know the author of, but it is a psalm asking for the Lord's help in times of old age. Psalm 70. God, hurry to rescue me. Lord, hurry to help me. Let those who seek to kill me be disgraced and confounded. Let those who wish me harm be turned back and humiliated. Let those who say, aha, aha, retreat because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation continually say, God is great. I am oppressed and needy. Hurry to me, God. You are my help and my deliverer. Lord, do not delay. <clears throat> Psalm 71. Lord, I seek refuge in you. Let me never be disgraced. In your justice, rescue and deliver me. Listen closely to me and save me. Be a rock of refuge for me where I can always go. Give the command to save me, for you are my rock and fortress. Deliver me, my God, from the power of the wicked from the grasp of the unjust and oppressive. For you are my hope, Lord God, my confidence from my youth. I have leaned on you from birth. You took me from my mother's womb. My praise is always about you. I am like a miraculous sign to many, and you are my strong refuge. My mouth is full of praise and honor to you all day long. Don't discard me in my old age. As my strength fails, do not abandon me. For my enemies talk about me, and those who spy on me plot together, saying, God has abandoned him. Chase him and catch him, for there is no one to rescue him. God, do not be far from me. My God, hurry to help me. May my adversaries be disgraced and destroyed. May those who intend to harm me be covered with disgrace and humiliation. But I will continually, I will hope continually, and will praise you more and more. My mouth will tell about your righteousness and your salvation all day long, though I cannot sum them up. I come because of the mighty acts of the Lord God. I will proclaim your righteousness, yours alone. God, you have taught me from my youth, and I still proclaim your wondrous works. Even while I am old and gray, God, do not abandon me. While I proclaim your power to another generation, your strength to all who are to come. Your righteousness reaches the heights, God. You have done great things. God, who is like you? You caused me to experience many troubles and misfortunes, but you will revive me again. You will bring me up again, even from the depths of the earth. You will increase my honor and comfort me once again. Therefore, I will praise you with a harp for your faithfulness, my God. I will sing to you with a lyre, Holy One of Israel. My lips will shout for joy when I sing praise to you, because you have redeemed me. Therefore, my tongue will proclaim your righteousness all day long, for those who intend to harm me will be disgraced and confounded. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day, and I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.